Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Praise the Lord. Good evening. Yeah, I cannot see anyone. Can I see the faces? Oh, yes. One by one, please. Yeah. So I cannot see Jocelyn Auntie. So we'll wait for Jocelyn Auntie to join. Okay. She must be in some other session, I'm sure. <coughs> so did how was your Sunday? Did any of you get a time to pray in tongues? And did any of you got a chance to go through any of the sessions? Jerome said yes. Jerome always says yes. Okay, good, Jerome. Okay, and uh, any of you started praying in tongues? At least 10 minutes? Okay, Jocelyn Auntie is around. So let's start with the prayer. Jochu, Joshua, sorry. Joshua, we will pray. Yeah. I'm sorry. One second. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. dear Lord, I thank. Wait, one second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thank you. My... Am I audible? Yes, yes. You are. You are. Okay. May I the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, I thank you for bringing us all here today. I pray you will guide our minds and hearts as we listen to this session today. Draw us close to you as we listen to your word. Let the Holy Spirit guide us to the truth and may we, uh, and, uh, may we be able to plant God's um, seed in our heart, God's word in our heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Joshua. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Hi, Jocelyn. Hi, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So, we were learning about the third soil, right? So, in the third soil, we see the first one, what we saw. There are three things in the third soil. What happened? Everybody is quiet. Can hear me, right? Yes. Can, yes, we can hear. Yeah. So what are the three things we saw in the third soil? Leo for wealth. Worry. Cows, deceitful riches, and the cows of the world. What is the first one? Cows of the world. The first one is cows of the world. Second one, don't say no. Wait. Second one? Um, Jocelyn, I'll just tell them that you all can unmute and speak. Huh? That you have, you can, you don't have to message me. All are messaging me. You can unmute, unmute and speak. The second one was mammon. Very good, Maman. So what was Deceit the third one? And last what we learned? Sin. Ah, sin. Praise God. Did we see the last one was sin? About the lust? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, what was that? Sin, right? So did we see how, how does sin come? Can somebody tell me what is sin and how do we commit sin? It looks like two days, three days gap, and you all forgot. Sin is washed by a huh? seed. Who said that? Jerome. Yeah, Jerome, what did you say? Uh, is sin caused by a seed that is planted in us? What seed? Uh, partially a spirit of 
Mamón. Okay. Badji. It looks like I have to take again the last day of class. Okay. Did I go very far? Thursday? No. Okay. Diarrhea? Sin is not action. It is in our heart. Ah. Sin action is the result of that sin. Yes. Yes. But actually... You also said right, thing, right action will not change wrong thing. Yeah. Yes. James right Washington. action will not change wrong thinking, but right thinking will always change my wrong action. Wrong. Usually we think sin is in the action, right? If I commit, if I if I if I rob, if I commit murder, if I do something like that, then it is sin. But according to the Bible, we saw sin gets just like how the seed enters into the soil. Like that, when I allow any thoughts that is contradicting to God's word, when I allow those thoughts and entertain it, thoughts will come. Even Jesus had thoughts, right? Even the devil came and gave Jesus thoughts. But did he allow those thoughts? Did he, did he entertain those thoughts? No. Did he resist the thought? Yes. 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 The action part comes later. Sin begins where? Sin begins first in the thoughts. That's why we saw what did David do? Can you put that, uh, Enoch 119? 119, I think, verse 9. Uh, Psalms 119. Nine, nine, nine. Okay. Put, uh, put an RSV. Okay. Now, what is he saying? How can young people keep their way pure by guarding it? Guarding it according to your word now see the 11th verse i treasure your word in my heart i treasure your word in my heart so that i may not sin against you means what if i don't treasure god's word in my heart then i cannot fight against sin now, did Jesus have, did the devil bring negative thoughts to Jesus? Yes. But did he have the word in his heart? Yes. Because, only because he had the word, he immediately resisted the devil. How? By speaking the written word of God. That's what David is saying. I treasure your word in my heart. So sin gets conceived where in the heart correct i treasure your word in my heart so that i may not sin against you that's why even jesus said you might you would have heard in the law the law will say that if you murder your breath if you murder someone you become a murderer but jesus said i tell you if you hate your brother, you are a murderer. Actually, Jesus is, you might think like Jesus is changing the law. No, no, Jesus is not changing the law. In fact, he's, he's showing you how uh, he's revealing uh, about this law. The reason why somebody is going and killing somebody, literally, for example, Cain and Abel. Did Cain, Cain go and kill Abel? Yes. Now, when did that uh, anger came? Not when he killed. The anger came much before in his heart. Yes or no? The hatred came much before. Yes or no? When he saw 
something with his eye, somebody else was appre appreciated. That's the time anger came, bitterness came, hatred came. That very moment that sin got conceived in his heart. How does jealousy come? Jealousy comes, jealousy is nothing but uneasiness when somebody else is given more preference. Do you feel uneasy when somebody else is given appreciation? In the, maybe in the classroom, somebody else has been appreciated. Does it irritate you? Yes. Yeah. So what is that? Yeah. That is a spirit. So what should I do? I should quickly understand. Bible says that I should, I should allow others to. There is a scripture that says, that when we are in Christ, I'll show you that scripture, okay? Put that Philippians chapter 2. I'm going a little out of the topic, but I want you to see the scripture. I love the scripture. Philippians 2, uh, verse number 3. Ah. Now see this. Do nothing from selfish ambition. Bible says, do nothing with self selfish ambition or conceit, okay, in RSV, but in humility, regard others as better than yourself. Do nothing in selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, in humbleness. I have to regard others as better than myself. Bible says, I have to consider others better than myself. Now see that next verse. Let each one not look, not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Now when Jesus came to this earth, when he died for us, did he think any benefit for himself or did he think benefit for others? Others. Did he get any benefit by dying for us on the cross? Or did we get the benefit? We got we the, get the benefit. That's why many times, do you say I have the mind of Christ? Do you say that? Yes. I have the mind of Christ? Yes. Yes. Do you know what is the mind of Christ? The mind of Christ will not do anything for his own benefit. <laughs> See the next verse. You know, put that, put that. It is there. See the next verse. Let each one, let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. What is spirit of jealousy? Just the opposite. Spirit of jealousy is when others are benefited, I get irritated. When others are appreciated, I become uneasy. When others get promotion, I become sad. But whereas the mind of Christ is not looking unto his own interest, but to the interest of others. This is the mind of Christ. Many times when we say, I have the mind of Christ, we always think about getting good marks. Correct? We always think about being number one. But how many times we think when I say I have the mind of Christ, the mind of Christ is not to be selfish. The mind of Christ is to regard others as better than yourself. The mind of Christ is not thinking about your own benefit, but the mind of Christ is to think about the, it, but to the interest of others. Praise God. Now, only if you go and study this word in your heart, that's why David is saying, if I don't have this word, see, if I would have not shown this, you would have never understood the mind of Christ, right? So only if you have the word in your heart, that's the time you will not sin against God. Praise God. You know, can you put that, can you put that scripture, please? You know, I like this uh, chapter, not only from this verse, right from the beginning. It's a, it's a very, very beautiful 
chapter. Okay, I will show this in another translation. Okay, uh, can you put in uh, compare? Uh, sorry, com can you put in not compare? Uh, can you put in message translation? Okay, third, third verse, third verse from third. Now see this. Th <laughs> this when I read this, I was like, wow, it's so different. Okay, now see this. Don't push your way to the front. Don't push your way to the front. But actually in this world, we are taught how to push ourselves in the front. We are being taught how to market ourselves. But in the kingdom of God, don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. You know who's a true leader? If you want to learn who is a true leader, you have to learn from Jesus. <laughs> true leadership is not pushing myself up. True leadership is helping others to go ahead of us. Put yourself aside and help others go ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Now see that word obsessed. We are all obsessed. You know, I would always... Uh, when I teach, I say this and I always think about this. You know, the biggest deliverance we all need is deliverance from self. The biggest deliverance we need is not from the demon, from the self. No, demon will only come to tell you, see you, he wants to change your focus to you. See how he spoke about you. See, uh, he, you are not given preference. See, he did not, he forgot you. See, he did not do this to you, correct? Yeah. What did he get? What did he? How did he tempt Cain? See, God did not appreciate you. See, he is. It is all that no, the devil himself. God is a God who is meek and humble, and the devil is opposite to God. He is full of pride. Pride is nothing but to be self-centered and self-focused, and the devil always wants you to be self-centered. He always want to want you to be obsessed. Think only about you and your advantage and how should I become number one. But in the kingdom of God, that's not how it works. The, the world system and the kingdom of God system works very, very different. That's why in the kingdom of God, the system is the way to go up is down. That's why the Bible says God gives more grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. You know, on the other day, uh, we were having this tongue session. So there was a point about boldness. How when they spoke, when they received the gift of tongues, the disciples were filled with boldness. You know, you boldness is nothing but it is a result of humbleness. I'm not talking about the world boldness. I'm talking about the Bible boldness. If you see the disciples, they were very bold. You know why they were bold? Because they were humble. I'll give you one example. I'll give an example of Mother Mary. Okay. Now, was Mother Mary bold? Yes. She was very bold. Yes. You know, for she was very bold for the decision that she made. If, if she, if, you know, when, when God gave her uh, her promise, okay, uh, the word, what did she say? Let it be done according to thy word. Yeah. And for her to agree, if anybody is going to have a child before marriage, then that, that woman will be stoned. That woman will be, uh, you know, have bad name. That woman will have completely bad character. But she didn't even think for a minute, what will people think about me? She didn't care about people. She was not a people pleaser. She was bold. You know why she was bold? She did not care about to be a people pleaser. She was so humble. You know who's a humble person? A humble person is a person who agrees with what God's word says. Now, another example, Jesus was so bold. On those days, if anybody would go and touch a man with leprosy, Okay, it is 
it is not right correct because a man with leprosy is untouchable you can't touch he is unclean but what did jesus do he went and he touched a, a jew going and speak to a samaritan that is something not right the jew will never speak to the samaritans when jesus went and spoke that to a woman samaritan woman he was so bold jesus was you know he had a name jesus is the jesus he eats with the sinner he roams with the sinner that was a action of boldness now you know why he was bold because he never ever was a man pleaser but he was a god pleaser his father he was only pleasing the will of the father now you see the disciples if they would go and preach they were threatened to be killed but they did not have fear they were bold why they were so humble humbleness means what to agree with the word now many times you know holy spirit will tell in your heart go and give testimony and you would feel like how in your heart so shy what will people think about me what if i make any mistake lisa correct uh i used to be like that but actually to... uh during uh, i during my birthday my birthday just got over i got a chance to uh, give a testimony to two of my friends who are hindus and i uh, did that so earlier means you were think what will they think about me yeah yeah i was very scared about now th- see you. now in this world you know shyness shyness is called as what humbleness but in the bible shyness is pride you know why shyness is pride the reason why shyness is pride is because, because i'm thinking i i'm thinking what will others think about me what if i speak something wrong how bad i will look it's i become so i conscious but boldness is to be humble you know why if god told me if if god's word that's what mother mary said if if god has given me this promise i'm going to do i don't care what people would speak if god's word says so then i'm going to obey his word i'm going to if god has inspired me i'm going to come and give the testimony if god has told me to go and speak to this person i'm going to speak even if that person thinks wrong about me no problem because i'm a god pleaser you know to be shy is pride but to be bold is humbleness but this boldness is not self confidence it's not confidence because i you know some sometimes you become so confident i'm very good in this area i'm very good i'm very talented you know remember even paul said i i i labor more than all of them but not me the grace of god he never said it's my talent he said it is the grace of god means what his confidence was not on his own his confidence was not on his own gifts or his talents or his ability but that boldness has come because his confidence was in christ praise god okay this subject on pride and humility it is a very 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 important and it goes i it's a, you know i think in uh, in global we had this almost for one month we learned we learned only on this topic on pride and humility praise god yeah. okay now now listen to this when i become uh god conscious when i become christ conscious and when i have this word in my heart okay only when i have this seed in my heart only then i will be able to resist sin none of us can resist sin with our own ability none of us can resist sin with our will power none of us can overcome our sin with our own uh, strength if you try to overcome sin or any bad habit with your own ability with your own will power with your own strength then you will go into condemnation have you ever experienced condemnation remember i told you about the the rat do you remember that's how the temptation begins 
the temptation comes the you know the rat, 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 rat trap yes. the rat trap correct the bait in it it be, it's it becomes so attractive that's how the devil attracts and then he traps you then he, he, he gives you fresh a uh, pleasure okay after pleasure comes what after after pleasure comes condemnation the devil will not leave you there first he will tell you this is so nice this is so enjoyment this is so much pleasure first he will tempt you first he will attract you first he will show you all the colorful side does the world look colorful yeah does the enjoyment look colorful yeah it yeah. looks colorful but it is deception what is deception a lie is presented to you like a truth but once you get into it into sin that's what sin is always attractive sin is always colorful sin is always it looks enjoyment but once you get trapped into it then you are not able to come out of it then the devil begins to condemn you now what is condemnation it is a sense of unworthiness Unworthy. yeah it's a sense of unworthiness it's where the devil tells you you are not fit you are not fit that's when you come into condemnation you know there are two words one is guilt and one is shame one is guilt and one is shame do you know what is the difference between guilt and shame anybody the difference between guilt and shame shame is feeling like you feel embarrassed and the difference between guilt is that you regret something that you did uh something you said right who is that sin is something you feel embarrassed then the second part what did you say uh, guilt is you feel embarrassed then no, no a shame is feel like when you feel embarrassed uh, then um guilt is something when you feel like you, you regret something and you okay guilt is some the guilt is something like when you do something you feel guilty so what like you feel you, sorry what is shame you. what is shame can i say ah uh, you know no i know you know wait <laughs> can i say yeah i think you also okay. know the way you are confident okay let me hear yeah uh, guilt is something that uh, you 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 do some something wrong and then afterwards you feel sorry about it and you come and you console it to the person and shame is where you know you have done the crime but now you are feeling ashamed to go and face that person okay okay now let me tell you okay now when a person is guilt that person keeps thinking why did i do this i made this mistake okay but shame is the person thinks i am a mistake guilt is keep thinking on i did this mistake i did this mistake i did this uh, you know i did this wrong you keep thinking on i did that but shame is when the person starts thinking i am a mistake uh guilt is i failed i failed miserably and i keep thinking i failed miserably but that guilt can lead a person into shame where a person thinks i am a failure can you see the difference now see i i can see i failed but when you keep on you know that condemnation keeps coming you failed you failed you failed at one at one point of time your identity itself changes where you start see yourself as a failure i am a failure i am a mistake shame is when it attacks your identity the very core of who you are what you are and that's exactly what the devil wants to do first he wants to you know tempt you with sin and then he wants to bash you with condemnation and then he wants to bring you when when he starts condemning you that's when you get into guilt and slowly he wants to attack your very identity and that's when a person comes to a place where he says 
I myself a failure. I am a burden. I am a mistake. I am good for nothing. That's when the devil attacks a person's identity. And that's exactly what sin does. Remember, if you try to overcome sin with your own strength, then you will always get into the cycle of sin. How many times you made a mistake and you felt bad or you felt sorry for the sin that you committed? Every time you feel sorry or you felt bad, you will see in no time again you get into the temptation and again you fall into the same sin and you will get into a cycle of sin. Remember, with your own willpower, with your willpower, you can only control one or two days. But then it is a cycle. And the devil's aim is always to bring condemnation and, and start judging you. You are good for nothing. You did this, you did this, you did this, you did this. And at one point of time, that guilt will change into shame. And you feel that's what happened to the Samaritan woman. She was not only in guilt, she was in shame. She was ashamed. That's why she was not able to come out in the public to take water. She came in the noontime when nobody is there. Why? She was living in shame. Praise God. But the good news is, Jesus took my sin. Jesus took my shame. Jesus took my guilt on the cross 2,000 years ago. You know, when you see in the cross, you see Jesus with minimum clothes, but actually Jesus was stripped naked. He was put to shame. They spit on him. They insulted him. They abused him. They slapped him. They beat him with rods. They made fun of him. You know why? Because he took your shame and my shame on the cross 2000 years ago. Now see this. Uh, put um, 2 Corinthians 5 21. 2 Corinthians 5 21. <laughs> Yeah. 2 Corinthians. Okay, this is different from that other translation. Okay. Read that. Oh, you're putting a different translation. I was wondering why is this translation? Put NRSV. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, now read. For, okay, okay, I'll only read. For our sake, he made him, made him to be sin who knew no sin. Now, did Jesus commit any sin? No. 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 He was no. tempted. He, he was tempted, but he never committed sin. He went through temptation just like every one of us. But he never allowed that seed. He never entertained the seed. He never committed a single sin. He was and he is sinless. Jesus did not commit sin. But for our sake. For whose sake? For your sake and my sake. For our sake, he made him to be sin. Who knew no sin? He, he did not commit any sin, but he was made sin. God made him. God the Father made him to be sin who knew no sin. Why? So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Just like how Jesus, who knew no sin, was made sin in the same way we who know who we who, who know no righteousness. We don't know what is righteousness, correct? 
we never lived righteous but god made us righteous just like how jesus who knew no sin he was made sin we who never lived righteous god made us righteous so that we might become the righteousness of god praise god okay put uh, put romans we'll come back here put romans 5 um i'm not very sure just go down put 19th verse 19th verse 19th verse yes correct correct for just as by the the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners now there we see jesus who knew no sin was made sinner here it says one man's disobedience who's that one man adam 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 adam's one sin that many were made sinners means what the the nature of sin was passed from adam to every man generation and generation the nature of sin was passed from adam to every man who was born from adam but the good news is jesus was not born of the seed of a man but he was born through the holy spirit okay now let me ask you some questions will a 6 month old baby commit sin no yes 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 Yes. 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 Daria yes. 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 is so confident. No. Yes. How many of you are yes. saying no? How many of yes. you are saying no? No. no. Raise your hand. No. Raise your hand. No. Raise your hand. Let me see. Alistair taught us. Ah, in spite of that, we can see so many hands. No. Who said Alistair taught us? Filda. <laughs> How many of you are saying no? Okay. Those who have raised hand, do you have uh, any younger sister or brother? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You ask your yes. mom. Okay. If you don't have a younger sister or younger brother, you ask your mommy. When when I was a baby, okay, you kept me aside and you lifted another baby. What did I do? What did I do? Cry. What did I do? Cry. Cry. Why why do you cry? Why do you cry? Because he felt jealous. Jealousy. So where did that six month old baby learn jealousy? Is the sin nature inside him passed from? But Daria, just now you told, gave me an answer saying no, six month old baby will never commit sin, and now you are giving me a different answer. Have you seen a six month old baby being so adamant? Have you seen? If I am hungry, I am hungry. I don't think whether you are you are busy or you are. I can't even wait for another one minute. Where do you think that nature came from? If you see a small child, you no need to teach bad things, but you have to teach good. Why? The nature of committing sin is come from birth. We don't commit sin. We don't become sinner because we commit sin, but we commit sin because we all have the nature. When we were, we all had the nature when we were born from our mother's womb. it was a nature now for example there are two two pet one is a pig and one is a dog okay if you give bath to both the animals both the pet one comes and jumps and licks on you one goes and sleeps in the gutter now what is the two two animals dog the pig is the one who spread finger both are given the same treatment right yes, yes. and both are given the same treatment do both behave the same no no because the nature of the both is not the same correct in the same way when we were born we had the nature inside of us what nature because of one man's disobedience many were made sinners we were born with the nature of sin 
but the good news is put that scripture again you know romans 5:19 Okay, for just as by one, by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience that many will be made righteous. Just like how one man Adam committed sin, and because of his uh, sin. everyone who was born from adam they had the sin nature in them now because of one man's obedience that is christ you and i we are made righteous now what is the meaning of the word righteous right standing with god or right having standing and having the very nature of god okay you are giving the definitions very good but you have to understand it not just by, by heart it or muck up it okay you have to understand what you're saying right standing with god the reason why we give definition is so that you get the understanding if you don't understand and only by heart the definition then if you don't have the understanding the devil will come and steal it right we we learnt it so understanding is very important yeah, right standing side. means what we I, cannot I have know. right standing before god if there is sin we will be disqualified but now i have the right standing before god because of whose obedience because of the obedience of jesus because of what he has done not what i have done but because of what jesus has accomplished on the cross that's why it says that jesus was made sin who no knew who knew no sin so that now we are made righteous and now we have right standing with god now there is one more definition for righteousness that is we have the nature of god now when we were born from our mother's womb we had the nature of sin but when we were born again we become new creature and now we have the nature of god in us that's why we are now righteous means what now we have god's nature earlier we have the nature of sin that's why we were committing sin but now we have god's nature in us because we have god's nature in us now we are equipped to live a good life are you understanding yes. now we have the yes. nature just like how the pig had a nature and the dog had a nature earlier we had the nature of sin but now when i'm born again i have the nature of god in me that's why romans 5 5 the same chapter romans 5 5 says the love of god is poured in my heart through the holy spirit yeah and hope does not disappoint us because god's love will be poured or has been poured has, has been has been poured, poured into poured. our hearts not will be poured has been poured into our hearts how through the holy spirit who will be given or holy spirit that has, been, that has been given to us now we have god's love in us we have god's nature in us so what is righteousness i have god's nature i have god's love in me but the problem is my mind my unrenewed mind the reason why even though i have god's nature i still commit sin because of the negative seeds that i have received now when i receive that negative sinful seed and when i start to chew it when i start to entertain it that seed becomes you know it grows and it becomes into sin now the devil starts telling me you are a sinner you are a sinner now i get into you committed sin you are a committed sin you you did this you are not fit you are not worthy you are a, you know he starts saying you are a failure and all those things slowly that guilt becomes into shame and then you start doubting your own identity you start seeing yourself i am a failure i am good for nothing i am a sinner but then when you take the word of god the word of god will teach you who you are really in christ 
Your identity is not based on your action. Your identity is based on who Jesus is. Now you start believing that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. When your thinking begins to change, then your action by default begins to change. Did you understand? Yes, children, yes or no? Ma'am, can you say the last, last yes. sentence? Okay, the last one is, okay, I will show you one, one scripture. I think it's late, but I'll show you one scripture. This will give you a good understanding. Okay, not one scripture. It is actually three verses, but I can go on quick. Go to, go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, 9, and 10. Verse 8, 9, and 10. Okay, if I'm going fast, no problem. We will learn it again, okay? I'm only going to show one part, but later on we will study the scripture in depth. Now see this, Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. Grace is, I am not saved based on what I have done. What is grace? Grace is God's unmerited favor. I, 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 have, I do not deserve, correct? Undeserved. Grace mark. You failed and teacher gives you. Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. Your line is not clear. Brian, just wait. Just hold on. Let me finish, okay? Let me finish. Then you ask. I couldn't mute you. Okay. Okay, just hold on. Let me finish. For by grace, you have been saved through faith and it is not your own doing. Nobody is saved because of our own good works. And this is not your own doing. No, we are made righteous, not because we lived righteous. Because Jesus was made sin. Now, when I believe in what Jesus did, now by belief, by faith, I am made righteous. That's all. That's why it says, for by grace... You have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Now see the ninth verse. Not the result of works. Nobody can boast so that no one can boast. Nobody can say, today I am righteous because I helped so many people. I am righteous because I did this. No, I am righteous. It's a gift. I am made righteous. Why? Because Jesus was made sin. Now, because he was made sin, I am made righteous. Now, see the 10th verse. That's what I want to show you now. See the 10th verse. For we are what he has made us. He has made us what? He has made us righteous. Now, we have God's nature in us. He has, we have God's love in us for we are what he has made us created in Christ for good works. Now, because I have God's nature, because I have God's love, now I'm equipped to do good work. Now, if you see the eighth and ninth word says, I'm not saved because of my good work. But because now I am saved, because now I, ha I, am the, I have the nature of God, because now I am righteous, now I, am, I cannot do good work with my own. Because now I have the Holy Spirit, because now I am the righteousness of God, I am equipped. Now I can do good work. So the devil will come and he will come and actually question your identity. He will attack your identity. He will keep telling you are a mistake, you are a failure and all those things. But once you understand, no, I am not, not a person who is a failure. I am the righteousness. I have the right standing with God. I have the nature of God, not my strength, not my own works. There is nothing to boast. It is God's nature in me. It is God's love in me. Now, when you start renewing your mind, your right thinking is what will begin to change your wrong action. So the word of God will teach you to change your heart condition. The word of God will change you to ch uh, change your mind. That's why, what is David saying? How can a young man keep his way pure? Means what? How will you cleanse your heart and your mind? The word of God is, the word of God is like a soap. 
and when you start spending time with the word of god it is the word of god that cleanses your heart from corruption that is what will cleanse your mind from corruption if without the word of god nobody can live holy why because nobody can live right with our will power but when we understand that now i am the righteousness of god i have the nature of god the love of god is poured in my in my in my spirit now i have to renew my mind to experience this righteousness that's when my habits start to change that's why the scripture says for we are what he made us he made you how in god's nature when i'm a new creation i am made i am i have become righteous i am made righteous now he has made me he has created me in christ jesus for good works but i am not saved because of my good works no 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 nobody can be saved based on that's why the scripture says not the result of works so that no one may boast the salvation i have received the forgiveness of sins i receive it is completely a free gift that's why the eighth verse says it is the gift of god and this is not of your own doing it is a gift of god but now because i have god's nature i have to renew my mind the more i start to know who my identity is that's when my action begins to change praise god i think today it was little heavy correct yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, the answer came. <laughs> ma'am, we already learned the scripture, ma'am. We already learned it, but it is good to learn yes. it again and again. Praise God. It was from a different point of view, so it was really good. Praise yeah. God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I think we have gone I have gone extra 5 minutes. that's okay that's all right you know I, i'm sure you know and uh, somebody was asking uh, what is the definition of jealousy jocelyn uh, just a single word if you could tell you know yeah. they... jealousy is when you when uh, you know it is uneasiness when you see somebody else uh, is given more prefer- preference okay all right any questions otherwise joslanti will pray for us to renew our hearts yeah there is lisa yeah. want to say so uh, then what is envy can you give me the definition <laughs> um i'm not very sure they both come they are both are interchanged envy it's... jealousy yeah i think when envy comes it's Similar. a next step it's a next step when it gets into an action uh if i so jealousy I mean, is only a feeling yeah filda uh jealousy is like uh, what somebody has i want it but envy is like somebody has it why he has it they shouldn't have i should have that is envy no i yeah see and uh, jealousy jealousy leads to envy jealousy is only a feeling but then that leads to je- envy but i will check on that okay i will i will get the answer for that and come praise god Thank you, Joseph. So we will just uh, just. Ah, uh, yeah, I got, I got the, de- I got the definition for jealousy. Okay. One minute. Uh, yeah, you can write down. Jealousy is the sense of uneasiness. Is the sense of uneasiness or anxiety. So when when you say jealousy, it's only a sense. It's only a feeling. but then that gives birth to envy when you get into an action where you show it in your action or in your behavior okay so what is jealousy jealousy is the sense of uneasiness or anxiety that stems from the fear of preference that stems from the fear of preference being given to another that is jealousy jealousy is the sense of uneasiness or anxiety that stems from the fear of preference being given to another i learned this but i forgot the whole definition okay but i have the notes okay praise god thank you jesus 
Okay. Thank you, thank you Lord. Thanks. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for showing us how the devil would deceive us and attack our identity, Lord. Lord, today, as you had shown these children that there is nothing to boast in us, today we are made righteous. We have the right standing with you. We have the nature of God. And this is completely because of your love. It is because of your love that it is your blood that has cleansed us, that has made right with you. It is, it is your love that you have put your nature in each of us, Lord. And the devil would come with a lie saying, you are a mistake, you are a sinner, you are, you, you are uh, a failure. Lord, that is not who I am. My identity is not what I have done in my past. My identity is who I am in Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for teaching us this truth that our true identity is in Christ. And now we have the nature of God in us. We have the love of God in us so that we can live like you, that we have the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ is not to think of my own benefit, but the mind of Christ is to think others' benefit. And mind of Christ is to esteem others better than self. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Help us that we die and you increase. As these children start renewing the mind, Lord, let them understand that they have to decrease and Christ who is in them increase so that it is not about self-exaltation, but it is about Christ's exaltation and helping others to go ahead Thank you, Lord, for teaching us that the way to go up is to go down. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching us the truth that, that these good seeds are planted in these children's heart. Thank you, Lord. And these seeds will not be stolen by the enemy. And thank you, Holy Spirit, that it is your grace that you have given these children so that they resist the devil, not with their willpower, but through the help of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Name of the Father and of the Amen. Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you, sister. Bye. Thank you, thank you, sister. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.